We'll begin with members' statements. The member for Simcoe Gray. Thank you and good morning, Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise today to speak about the long and proud tradition I have in Simcoe Gray of creating elite athletes and great teams. They've competed nationally, internationally, and provincially winning titles. And today I'd like to recognize a number of recent additions to that long list. But going back historically, we have two-time NHL All-Star and Stanley Cup winner Jason Arnett from the town of Wasega Beach. We have Team Canada women's soccer gold medalist and youngest female Olympic goal scorer in Olympic history, Deanne Rose from Alliston. We have Canada men's wheelchair basketball team member and two-time gold medalist at the World Championships, Chris Stoutenberg from Collingwood. And of course, we have Jozo Wider, the Canadian Ski Hall of Famer and founder of Ontario's largest ski resort in the town of Blue Mountains. And today I'd like to focus on Team Froud, who has won the right to represent our province at the 2023 Canadian Senior Curling Championships. The team is from Wasega Beach and consists of members Kerry Lackey, Kristen Turcott, Julie McMillan, and led by Skip Susan Froud from the Alliston Curling Club and their coach Al Corbaya. I'd also like to recognize a great accomplishment by a local Alliston hockey player, Tyson Forster, who on March 9, 2023, played his first NHL game for the Philadelphia Flyers. Tyson is a former Barry Colts player and was drafted by the Flyers in 2020. Tyson had all 11 members of his family uh, watching the game, and his brother Dawson made the 20-hour drive from West, uh, British Columbia to watch him play. I want to congratulate all these athletes on their great accomplishments and wish them well in the future. Thank you. Member statements. Member for Hamilton Centre. Thank you very much for allowing me to give my very first member statement in the House. I want to start off by thanking the volunteers who worked really hard on my campaign to send me here. I'm thinking of Ravi, Annika, Daniela, Giulietti, uh, Amber, and so many other people, Davin, who worked really hard to send me here. I also want to make sure to give a shout out to my mom, who I would not be here without. Um, the issues I care a lot about are healthcare, housing, and climate, and making sure to tackle the disabling conditions caused by harmful legislation in the House. I'm not here to be preoccupied by the strange rituals or this colonial building. I'm here because Hamilton Centre knows that I'm a fighter and I'm going to make sure to, that people are protected, that we're fighting for healthcare, housing, and the issues that people need to live, because people are dying, Mr. Speaker because of harm caused in this house. And I'm going to make sure, as the Hamilton Centre MPP, that I'm here to put up a fight. And thank you so much. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Oakville. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Speaker, and good morning to the members of the House. I'm delighted to share with you the success of the Special Olympics Ontario five-pin provincial qualifier event that took place this past weekend at Hopedale Bowl in Oakville, Ontario. The event was truly remarkable and locally driven with the support and backing of Special Olympics Ontario. It was an excellent turnout from Oakville athletes, pro providing to be an opportunity for athletes to compete and have fun in an inclusive environment. I'd like to highlight and give special thanks to James Montague, James has been an active member of the Special Olympics Oakville as both an athlete and a fundraiser. He excels in confidence and commitment when it comes to organizing and planning events that benefit young adults with disabilities in the Oakville community. James is also an award-winning entrepreneur, running his own event planning company called James Montagu Event Planner Group. He's received recognition for being an advocate for individuals with special needs. He's an incredible asset to our community and we're very proud to have him. I would like to also expend, extend my sincere gratitude to all those who attended the event and contributed to its success. Special Olympics Oakville has a long history of organizing numerous charity events in the past, and this weekend was yet another testament to the excellent work they do. They continually provide opportunities for athletes to develop physical fitness, demonstrate courage, experience joy, and participate in the sharing of gifts, skills, and friendship with their families and other athletes. I wish all the athletes the best of luck as they continue on their journey to the 2025 Special Olympics. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for London Fanshawe. 
Today, I rise to speak on behalf of my constituents of London Fanshawe, affected by the shortage of available beds for long-term care. My office recently received a heart-wrenching story of a family separated by the inadequacies in our long-term care system. Lorraine has been struggling to make an hour-long drive to see her mother, Bernice, at her home, a long-term care home in Stratford, Ontario. Bernice has waited more than 1,300 days to transfer to a London home to be closer to mm -hmm. her family. This is deplorable. Families deserve and need to be close to their loved ones in their final years. The Ontario Long-Term Care Association reports that nearly 40,000 people are on a waiting list for long-term care in Ontario and predicts that it could increase to about 48,000 by 2029. Keep in mind this is a projection that takes into account the 30,000 long-term care beds the government's already promised. The Financial Accountability Office estimates that the current government will only deliver 8,251 long-term care beds by the end of 2029. 324, well short of the promise to add 15,000 long-term care beds by that time. Bernice has been waiting more than three and a half years to move into a long-term care home closer to her family. Now it's too late. Given her deteriorating health, a transfer to a long-term care home is unlikely. Her next move is more likely to be in palliative care. How can this government justify their inactions while the families spend their final year separated from one another? We need to make investments in, in not-for-profit homes, make sure staff and resources are there for people when they need them in their most time of need. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The next member statement, the member for Whitby. Well, thank you, Speaker. This past Friday, MPP Jordan, the parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Long-Term Care, and I announced $170,466 for the village of Taunton Mills in Whitby to help residents with complex medical needs like dementia, bariatric care connect to specialized care and supports in their long-term care home instead of a hospital. Here, here. Speaker, this is part of a $20 million investment this year in 189 projects province-wide through a no new local priorities fund. Under the leadership of the Honourable Paul Clandra, the Minister of Long-Term Care, we're taking action to bolster our province's long-term care system and put residents' needs first. This work is built on four pillars, staffing and care, quality and enforcement, building modern, safe and comfortable homes, and providing seniors with faster, more convenient access to the services they need. Speaker, the government is fixing long-term care to ensure Ontario seniors get the quality of care and quality of life they need and deserve, both now and in the future. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. Yesterday, April 2nd, was World Autism Day. In recognition, I would like to share a message that I received from my constituent, Julia Cerurie, Julie Cerurie, about the challenges her family is facing. France, she wrote, we are feeling hopeless. We have gone through both our one-time funding and all it was was spent on ABI, ABA therapy for my son. My child is progressing. He is thriving. But now we have no more funds. This puts a lot of pressure on my family. We are put in situation where we need to decide, do we keep paying out of pocket as much as we can afford so that we can keep her, his spot with the therapist? If the ministry would give us a timeline, then we could plan, but we have no clue. It's mentally exhausting for both my husband and I. Also, I've been having to fight for support at school for my son. They've been removing support. The excuse is there are no staff. Nobody wants the job because it doesn't pay. Speaker, according to Freedom of Information, my office file of the 1,564 children enrolled in core clinical services, only 83 are from Northern Region. That's 83 kids from Perry Sound all the way to the Manitoba border. Is ignoring children with autism and their family the legacy that this government really wants? Member statements. The member for Brampton East. Thank you, Speaker. In 2013, Ontario was the first legislature across Canada to proclaim April as Sikh Heritage Month. This year marks the 10-year anniversary of the historical declaration. 
Throughout this month, events will take place to honour and celebrate the rich history, culture and contributions six have made to Ontario and Canada as a whole. This year, the Sikh Heritage Month initiative has organized many events in my riding of Brampton East and across the city of Brampton, including art exhibitions, concerts, and a number of workshops, including an official flag raising at Brampton City Hall. Speaker, this month is also significant to the Sikh community as April 14th is Vaisakhi, and a spring festival which marks the beginning of the harvest season in Punjab and the day the Order of the Khalsa was created. Vasaki is celebrated by visiting a Gurdwara to pray, seek blessings, and by doing seva, which is the act of selfless service. It is also uh, celebrated through the organization of parades, like the annual Khalsa Day Parade from Exhibition Place to Toronto City Hall. Um, speaker, thousands of community members from diverse backgrounds join and participate in the day's activities. And Speaker, I would like to take this moment to sincerely wish every Ontario, Ontarian celebrating a very happy Vasaki, a very happy Sikh Heritage Month. Sareanu Vasaki Dia, Lak Lak Vadaya. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Don Valley West. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to talk about the housing crisis and my riding of Don Valley West. The average rent in Toronto for a one-bedroom has reached $2,500. In the recently tabled budget, the government projects lower housing starts than they projected last year, and at this rate, they will miss their 10-year housing goals by at least 50 per cent. Yet still, the government insists they have a plan. So far, their plan seems to be only about tall and sprawl, neither of which is sustainable. In my riding of Don Valley West, we are still feeling the impacts of their irresponsible decision to waste taxpayer money and override City Council's Midtown and Focus plan. Now they are allowing 35-story-plus towers of mostly one-bedroom condos at a handful of choke points like Bayview and Broadway, not because it's good for our community. In fact, the city and residents say exactly the opposite. Our, neighbor is, our neighbourhood is losing a valued medical building along with its family doctors to 32-storey development, which will leave thousands more without a family doctor. Speaker, we need housing, but we also need a plan for our communities, where families and retired seniors can live too. A plan to ensure schools which are not overcrowded, parks and hospitals that has made Don Valley West a great place to live. Speaker, I would respectfully ask the government to let cities be planned by our planners to allow sustainable mid-rise density in our neighbourhoods, along with a plan for new schools, parks, community centres to keep Don Valley West the great place it is to live. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Oxford. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Norwich Chamber of Commerce recently handed out their annual Awards of Excellence. These awards honour outstanding individuals and businesses and recognise their contributions to the community. I congratulate this year's winners. Sherman Farms and Hoverbloom Farms, winners of the Family, Award, Family Farm Award, are from Holland. The Shermans and Hoganbooms have created two successful farm businesses. Norma's Coffee Bar, recipient of the Small Business of the Year Award. It's a place where every customer feels like family. Gun Hills Art Artisan Cheese, winner of the Large Business of the Year. I recommend everyone try their delicious cheese. Max Van Boer, who won the Agriculture Bursary Award for his insightful essay of the Ukraine War's impact on Canadian agriculture. Kanandra Hussey, whose essay on fostering youth engagement and employment earned her the Essay Contest Scholarship. Jaslyn Armstrong, a dedicated young leader who won the Youth Citizenship Award. Randy Nobbs, a long-serving community leader and winner of the Citizen of the Year Award for his contributions to minor hockey and baseball. Karen McSpadden, another wonderful volunteer who received the Judy Calium Memorial Award for her service to the people of Oxford and her involvement with the Norwich United Church. Mr. Speaker, these winners embody Oxford's value for hard work, innovation, dedication, and community service. Congratulations to one and all. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. <laughs> Speaker, I am thrilled, absolutely thrilled, to congratulate the community of West Lauren yeah, yeah. on being crowned Craft Hockeyville 2000. Yeah. It was so exciting for me to participate in the enthusiasm generated throughout this Canadian Community Challenge. 
West Lauren will now have the opportunity to host a pre-game NHL uh, game and will receive $250,000 for much-needed renovations to their local arena. I would like to take this opportunity to offer my sincere appreciation to Kraft Heinz for their generous support for 17 years. Kraft Hockeyville has proudly awarded a total of $4.5 million to 93 communities across our great country. Thank you, Kraft Heinz. Speaker, the municipality of West Elgin lost their beloved mayor just a few weeks ago. I know everyone in my riding of Elgin, Middlesex, London believes Mayor Duncan McPhail is looking down with pride and admiration for West Lorne's great achievement. Again, Speaker, well done to West Lorne. You have made Ontario proud. Go Comets, go. Concludes our member statements for this morning.